What happens to an ant that gets separated from its colony? An isolated worker ant, left to its own devices, would likely die a week or two before its normal three-week lifespan. And it would probably spend that for shortened time wandering around, confused, looking for its colony. Ants help each other trace the path between food sources and the colony by laying down chemical trails called pheromones. Our hypothetical solitary ant might try following pheromone trails it encounters, hoping they will lead it back home. Worker ants in a given colony are all the daughters of the original queen and can't simply apply for admission to a new colony. Three dangers, in particular, imperil a lost ant. The first, and most obvious, is a lack of food. Ants are natural foragers but are used to receiving cues from other ants about where to search for food. A single ant would not have the capacity to store enough food to survive for long. Furthermore, ants don't always eat substances in the form they are gathered. The leaf cutter ant finds plants and brings leaves back to the nest, where the material is ground up and used in the colony's fungus garden. The ants then eat the fruiting body of the fungus. Without the organizational assistance of the colony, a leaf does nothing to sate the appetite of a leaf cutter ant. The second danger is cold. Ants are ectotherms, animals that need heat but are unable to generate it themselves. When it is cold, ants in the colonies will seek the protective covering of the nest. If left to its own devices, a deserted ant would probably try to find a rock of the crack of a sidewalk to use as cover which may or may not be enough protection to keep it from freezing. The third problem our lonesome ant would encounter is nasty creatures that think of the ant as their dinner fare. Collectively, ants help protect one another. Alone, an ant must fend off a variety of predators, including other ants.